Welcome. This video is going to finish talking about ionic compounds and instead of looking at the bonds so much, now we're going to look at the properties that result because of the bonds. So in the previous video, I talked about that um, an ionic compound forms when there's a transfer of electrons. One atom is losing electrons, another atom is gaining electrons, and it benefits both atoms because they become more stable. They reach that eight is great or a stable octet. So once the ions form, you have this positive and negative ion, then what happens? Well, an ionic compound forms, and it forms crystals. And most of you are familiar with the idea of a crystal, like a crystal of salt. It might be a big chunk like you, uh, rock salt that you've seen around. So instead of forming individual molecules like water that forms individual H2O or water molecules, ionic compounds form these um, limitless crystals. They can go on as long as you want them to. And if you've ever seen what we call salt creep, and you see it on the salt water tank in the classroom, and you also see it in the winter when we put salt on the roads, you know, the salt just keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. That's because crystals are a lattice of alternating positive and negative ions. And I think of a lattice as being a three-dimensional ladder. So you can go up, you can go down, you can go back, you can go forth, you can go right, you can go left on it. So it's a ladder or lattice going in all directions. And again, it alternates positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. So if you look at my two pictures down here, in the one, there's uh, blue ions and green ions. The blue happen to be the positive, the green happen to be the negative ions, and they alternate in a one-to-one -one pattern. In my second example to the right, though, you may notice that we've got orange and green, and when we look at this, um, and you take a look at it, you can see that every orange is surrounded by six of the green. So you can really see the three dimensions to it that it goes in, you know, all six sides of the cube are being um, attracted by the alternating or oppositely charged ion. So the smallest whole number ratio of the ions in the compound, so the smallest whole number ratio of positive ions to negative ions is what we call the formula unit for an ionic compound. So how strong are ionic bonds? Well, compared to covalent bonds and metallic bonds, which we'll talk about later, they're pretty strong. But within ionic bonds, there's differing strengths. So the crystal lattice of the alternating ions and the strong attraction between the positive and negative ions form these strong bonds. But there is a difference in strength of different bonds, and that's measured with something called the lattice energy. So the amount of energy it would take to break apart this lattice or these alternating ions is called the lattice energy. And think of it as the energy to break up the lattice. So this strong attraction is the reason that ionic compounds have high melting points. They have high melting points. They're also going to have high boiling points because you have to melt before you boil. They also tend to be rigid and hard. Even though they shatter when you hit them with a hammer typically, they're still rigid and hard. It's just when you apply a force, then they break apart. A couple other properties. When ionic compounds are a solid, they're poor conductors, and that's because they're rigid, and electricity is the movement of charge. And so if you can't move the charges, it really doesn't matter that there's charge there. It's going to be a poor conductor. But when ionic compounds are dissolved in a solution or when they're melted into their liquid state, then they become good conductors of electricity. In fact, electrolytes are just ions dissolved in water, which conduct electricity well. And any ion dissolved in water is going to be a good conductor of electricity or an electrolyte. So salt water, electrolytes, fancy name for salt water. Another property is that when ionic compounds form, the reaction is almost always exothermic. What does exothermic mean? It means it releases heat. So um, there will be heat given off, and you can measure this heat, uh, and we often do, we call it the heat of the reaction. So what does it mean if a reaction is exothermic? It means when the ionic compound forms, it's more stable than the ions were before they formed. More stable means less energy. So it requires less energy to keep the compound together than it did for either element to stay by itself. And heat's going to be given off during this process. For example, hand warmers, they're just iron shavings. They're really small pieces of iron, and when you open them up to the air, oxygen's able to combine with them. It's basically just little pieces of iron combined with oxygen or rusting, 
giving off that heat. Okay, so back to lattice energy. Remember, lattice energy is the measure of the energy contained in the crystal lattice, or it's how much energy needs to be added to break apart what we call a mole of ions, so a bunch of ions. It has to equal the energy that was released when the ionic compound formed. So however much energy is given off when it forms, that's how much energy you have to put back in to take it apart. The more negative and the larger the number is for lattice energy, the stronger the bar bonds are. So a large negative uh, number means strong bond. And two things will make that number bigger. Smaller ions, and that's because the nucleus is closer to the valence electrons that they're holding on to. And a bigger charge on the ions, uh, positive and negative, means you've got like a bigger magnet hanging on there. So those two things are going to increase lattice energy. So I'm going to finish up looking at an example and then uh, leaving you with a try it. So for each pair below, which ionic compound would have the greater lattice energy? Well, LiCl and LiBr both contain Li, obviously. So that's not going to be a factor. So you have to look at Cl and Br. And Cl, if you look at Br, are in the same family, but Br is further down or bigger. Cl is the smaller atom. So that means LiCl will have the greater lattice energy or be harder to take apart. The second one, NaCl or MgF2, we have different anions and different cations. These are my positive ions. So if I look at Na, it forms a plus 1, and it's in period 3. Mg is going to lose two electrons and form a plus 2 charge, and it's in period 3 also. So this one's going to be smaller because it's further right. This one's larger, and that's size-wise. Looking at the charge, Mg has a bigger charge on it. So both things point to Mg being stronger. And let's look at chlorine and fluorine. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge. Fluorine also picks up a minus 1 charge. They're in the same family with chlorine being the bigger atom, fluorine being the smaller atom, and they both have the same charge, so charge isn't going to be a factor there. So we've got both of the smaller ions together and the one ion with the bigger charge together, so MgF2 is definitely going to take more lattice energy. So pause this and see if you can predict which pair will have the greater lattice energy, and then see if you can extend that idea and predict which compound in each pair will have the higher melting point. So when I look at Kf or Rbf, the F isn't going to matter since it's the same element in each compound, so it's really about K and Rb, and they're in the same family, but K is the smaller of the two meaning Kf will have greater lattice energy. SrCl2, MgO, this time when I look at Sr and Mg, they're in the same family with Sr being the bigger of the two, so this is the smaller of the two ions. And when I look at O and Cl2, they're in different periods, so this one, I'm going to look at the charge. This is picking up a minus 2 charge whereas this picks up a plus 1 charge, so this has a stronger charge. It's with the smaller positive ion. Oxygen um, is either going to be about the same size or smaller than chlorine, so it appears MgO should have the greater lattice energy. So which compound in each pair would have the higher melting point? The one that takes more energy uh, to break apart the lattice, because the lattice has to start stretching before it can melt. So KF and MGO.